Today's tutorial is all about applications of Gauss's divergence theorem. But let's actually just briefly write down the basic sort of um, identity in Gauss's divergence theorem. Now, this theorem is known by several names. It depends on what part of the world you come from. Okay, here's the basic identity. You've got a vector field, F, some solid region D. Now, D might be uh, um, a field sphere, or uh, a field can, or uh, um, a field cube. S is the surface that bounds this region D. N here is just is the outward pointing unit normal vector. Okay? So think of S as the closed surface enclosing the region D. Okay, so think of, think of the field sphere, right? That would be that could be your region D, and the boundary would just be the actual sphere, the, the, the edge of it. Okay, that would be your your surface S. Now Gauss's divergence theorem is one of the most fantastic theorems in calculus. Essentially, you're reducing the analysis of, say, this integral over some solid to some analysis on the boundary, on the boundary, in this case, a double integral, a surface integral. Now, let's just compare with what we already know. Suppose I have got a basic definite integral from calculus. And I'm integrating over this interval. What's the boundary of this interval? It's this point and this point. Fundamental theorem of calculus says that to evaluate this integral, I just use this right-hand side at the boundary points, where, of course, it, big F prime equals F. Okay, it's the similar here. You're looking at an integral, reducing it to some sort of analysis on the boundary, on the boundary of that set. Okay? That's why it's known as a fundamental theorem, sort of a generalisation of this in, in some sense. Okay, so let's have a look at a couple of examples and let's see how to apply this uh, Gauss's divergence theorem. So let's look at 178. Here we've got a surface integral. Oh, by the way, I forgot to say, uh, yeah, oh, it's en yes, en ends and outward pointing unit normal throughout the application of this theorem. Evaluate this surface integral, where this is your vector function, and S is the boundary of the solid omega bounded by these, these two constant planes and this cylinder. So let's draw a picture, and essentially what we're going to do is not evaluate this, we're going to use Gauss's divergence theorem and evaluate the triple integral over the solid um, that's bounded by S. So let's have a go. So this is 1, 7, 8. So we've got a vector field defined in the following way. And we've got some region S, that's the boundary of the surface of this omega, bounded by these two planes and this cylinder. So let's draw that in.
Okay, so here, I'm just, in, instead of having, um, just so I'm consistent with what I wrote before, instead of ha having um, omega here, I'm just going to change that to a, to a D, so I'm just consistent with what I wrote down before. Okay. So our three-dimensional region is just the following. Well, let's think about how we would describe this solid. Well, z's between 0 and 1, and x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 1. So it's just like a, a filled circle or a disk that goes just up and down the z-axis with centre 0, 0, radius 1. OK, so if I wanted to evaluate the following surface integral, right? Uh, let me just write just so S is just the sort of the boundary. OK, by this sort of curly D, I mean the boundary of the set D. Not a, it's not a partial derivative or anything like that. Now, by Gauss's divergence theorem, I'm just getting the following. So what I want to do, this is, now remember this is a triple integral, I want to take the divergence of my vector field and then just set up my, my triple integral. OK, so remember the divergence is just, all right, let's take the first component, differentiate with respect to x. Take the second component, differentiate with respect to y. Take the third component, differentiate with respect to z, and just add them all together. So the divergence is, will just be 1 minus 1, 2z, all added together. So I get 1 from there, I get minus 1 from the next one, and I get this. So it's just 2z. So here I'm applying Gauss's divergence theorem. All right, so let's replace div f with 2z. And now it's up to me to evaluate, set up and evaluate this triple integral. OK, so we're sort of back where um, back in one of the sections when we were looking at um, uh, triple integrals, sorry, triple integrals. OK, so how am I going to describe the region D? I've kind of got a description up here, but it's not that great. Can anyone suggest a coordinate system to work with here? It, yeah, it's a cylinder, so cylindricals. So remember, you've got an angle to the, in the xy plane to the positive OX axis, a theta. You've got a length to the origin in the xy plane, r, and you've got a height above or below the xy plane, a z. So let's think about the theta first. What are the bounds on theta going to be? Zero to two pi. This is just a um, little disk of radius one, so the r is going to be between zero and one, and the z is going to be between. 0 and 1. Now, what do I place, replace the area of the volume element with dv? Anyone remember? Almost. Right. R dz dr d theta. OK? So now all I need to do is evaluate this repeated integral. Now, firstly, notice that we have constants as the limits of integration, and we've just got a product of a function of z with a function of r. So actually, I can simplify this and just write it like this, as the product of three integrals. So um, let's do the dr then. So all I do is evaluate this integral, this integral, this integral, and multiply them all together. Pretty easy. So the first one's going to be 2 pi. The second one's going to give me a half r squared, which is just going to be a half. And the third one's going to give me z squared, which, is, which will just give me 1 in the end. OK? 
Okay. So there you go. That's an application of Gauss's divergence theorem. We reduced a surface integral down to a triple integral. Okay? Any questions? One way of interpreting this is the following. So F, let's say F's a, a velocity field of a fluid. Now, our answer is the net quantity of fluid to flow across the surface S per unit time. So if you want to just sort of break, boil that down, you just call it a flow rate. The The, the divergence theorem is an interesting thing. It's always at the last theorem in all those thick, chunky textbooks. So once you've learned Gauss's divergence theorem, te theoretically, you should know the whole of, the, the whole of calculus, okay, from page 1 to page 1,000.